In this video, I want to cover the uh, introduction to Excel, uh, basic things that you need to know when you're using this program. If you've used Word, you'll, you'll notice that uh, it's very similar in the sense that you've got ribbons and you've got um, uh, the way the window setup is very similar. Uh, however, it's a totally different program. Uh, this is a um, spreadsheet. Uh, workbook they call it and the workbook of course has several spreadsheets available so what we're looking at here is a spreadsheet what you need to know about a spreadsheet is it's a huge grid a huge table right and uh, with cells and every cell is defined as an intersection of the column and the row so this particular cell is C2 highlighted here highlighted here and here this is, I believe called the name box right so that tells you exactly which cell you're in. It is a massive, massive sheet. Uh, it doesn't stop at Z. It goes to AA, then AB, and then I believe it goes all the way to IV. So it's very, very wide and incredibly deep. Uh, last time I checked, it was over 64,000. So it is massive. Um, now, um, you, can, you can just use your arrows, use your mouse, right, to get around. No problem there. Um, <clears throat> If you want to uh, another sheet, you simply ask for another sheet. And oftentimes when you're working on a project, you'll have certain information on one sheet and different information on another sheet. Uh, the sheets, if you right click on the sheet, all your options for sheets are there. Uh, so you can insert another sheet this way. You can delete an entire sheet. You can rename by just clicking and renaming. Now, um, in the past, we've had issues with spaces. Uh, we so I don't recommend you use any spaces when naming a sheet. Uh, I also don't recommend that you use any uh, symbols at, such as uh, minus or divide or plus uh, because we're going, we're going to do math later on with these sheets. We're going to add things from several sheets. And when you, when you start putting those symbols in a formula, it, Excel is not going to know what to do. So no spaces and no, uh, none of those math type symbols, okay? When you're naming your sheets, keep them, keep them simple straightforward. Uh, I'm going to right click again and just show you some more options. Um, you can we'll get we'll get into some of this stuff later. You can protect the sheet and then you can actually have a color on the sheet. You can hide sheets as well. And oftentimes it's very valuable to select all your sheets and then what you'll do to one sheet you'll do to all of them. Uh, oftentimes what you have on, on all of your sheets are is the same information or the same formulas and all you're w looking forward to doing is putting data in. So uh, you can also select, I'm gonna add another sheet here. So now if I wanted new name and sheet two only, I would use control and now I've selected those two things, right? It's not that obvious that I've got those two selected. I wish it was more obvious, but it, it really isn't. Um, it doesn't stand out that much. Um, if I go control, so now it's darkened and sheet three isn't. So I guess it is. If you know what you're doing, you'll know that you have both of them. If you're not sure if you have two sheets grouped or not, check up here. It'll tell you that you've got two things grouped. It doesn't tell you exactly which ones, but again, the visual is supposed to help you with that. Uh, so that's how you work with, manipulate, insert, delete sheets. So I just deleted that one and I can delete this one now. And if I decided I want more, I can just go like this. All right. You can also, if I liked what I had in this sheet, let's pretend I had information, I can control and use my mouse to drag it over, all right, the same way I would in Word if you selected some stuff. So you can you can copy that to that, and then you can right-click and rename it. If you want to select everything on your sheet, so I'm going to move to to something. There we go. I'll use, I'll use something that's actually existing here. Now, um, this is your select all button right here. And that selects your entire sheet. So if you want it to format very quickly and easily, if you want it to copy. Now, if you only want to select a column, simply you have to come up to where the letters are. You can't be down here and click and expect to get the whole column. That's not going to happen. You got to come up to where the letters are. And then your arrow, your mouse, sorry, turns into a down arrow. And that lets you know that you can now select a column, the entire column. And if you click and drag across the top like that, you're selecting multiple columns. So that's how you select columns. Same idea with rows. You just come down where the numbers are, and then you can select just a row. 
or, or you can click and drag and select several rows. So that's how you select lots, uh, entire columns, entire rows. If you want to select uh, particular cells, it's very much like Word. You just click and drag across like that. Now, uh, I'm going to open up a, a blank one for this part of the lesson. I'm going to type just a word in here. So uh, a word is like a label. That's one of the three things you can type in a cell. So you've got labels that usually identify what's in the row. And then you've got numbers, of course. And then the third thing that you can put inside of a cell is a formula. And formulas start with equal, right? So I would say equal this plus this and enter. So those are the three things that you can put inside of a cell. Uh, back to that in a bit. Um, I want to get back to the cell here and, and selecting things. So now this cell is selected. When you're in Excel, you need to be uh, aware of the fact that wherever you put your mouse makes a difference. So when I'm in the middle of the cell, that allows me to click that cell, to select that cell and click and drag. However, if I go over to the perimeter, my mouse turns into four arrows and that means that I can now move that anywhere I want. So the four arrows is move. So in the middle, it's like a big white cursor, a uh, big white plus sign, sorry. Then you got the four arrows. And lastly, on the right hand corner, that's called your fill handle. Uh, more on that later, but your fill handle allows you to, one of, one of the many things you can do is, is copy. It allows you to copy. The other thing that I wanted you to know is when you're done typing something, let's say that you did want a formula here. So I want it to go equal this cell plus this cell plus this cell. It, when I have a formula in here, um, if I want to change the formula, there are two ways of doing it. One of the ways is to come up here into your formula bar, right, and change. So I can backspace. And let's say if I wanted to do minus the last one, I can do that. The, um, the other thing I can do is I can double click inside my cell. And I can do the editing in here, all right? So I wanted to go minus the last one, which was 8, E8 here. And then hit enter. And I made a mistake. Okay, that's what I wanted. Now, you can never include, one of the mistakes I made, I included the cell that I was in, in the formula. You can never do that. If you do that, you're gonna get a message saying that you got a circular reference. So, keep that in mind when you're putting in formulas. You can never ever include the cell you're in, in the formula, all right? So, I cannot put E8 in here. And if I try to do that, it's telling me that it found more than one circular reference. Do not ignore that message. You know you've got something wrong, all right? So you'd have to go back and make sure that you fix that. Otherwise, it's going to affect everything in your sheet. And there we go. So that's fixed. So two ways of changing a formula, formula bar and double click. Now, you'll notice that your, your labels automatically align left, all right, by default. And your numbers automatically align right, as do your formulas. You can change that if you don't like the look of it, but just be aware that that's the case. Uh, there are times when you will want um, numbers in your cell that aren't really numbers, such as dates, right? So this is, if this, this is a date. What you're going to want to do is instead of typing just a simple one, two, and three here, you're going to want to precede that number with an apostrophe and make that a numeric label, okay? So now Excel no longer sees this as a number. It sees it as a word and the reason that's important is we're going to learn how to do some automatic adding down the road and if you don't have that identified as a label it's going to want to grab that number as well so anytime you're using a number that you're never going to want to do math with like a student number an employee number social insurance number uh, make it a numeric label and the beauty of that is um, you, using your fill handle 
you can just type the first two in and it's going to know to keep going. And these are all labels. If I go to add sideways, it knows not even to, to think of grabbing that because it doesn't see that as a number. It sees it as a word. So that's numeric label. I might address that later on, but I, I, I usually teach it in my introduction lesson. The other thing you need to know is, is your label can be very long. So I'm just going to change this to very long label and hit enter. All right. Now let me explain this little process here. As long as I'm not using G4, it will allow me to keep typing and I'm temporarily borrowing G4. So none of this is in G4. If I click on G4, G4 is empty. There's nothing in it. Everything here is in F4. It's just so long that it's kind of borrowing uh, the property of G4. But if G4 decides that it wants something there, like the number eight, it's going to truncate or cut off what was supposed to be in here. So now you have two choices, of course. You can change the name of this label or you can adjust the width of this paragraph. Oh, sorry, this column is what I meant to say. Now, you can click and drag to do that. I find if I want to, I want this label to show perfectly, double clicking will adjust perfectly. It'll adjust only as wide as it needs to to accommodate that label. Um, the other thing that you can do is, I can probably get it from right clicking, is I can go to column width. Now, to be honest, I never use this, right? However, the test may ask you to set your column width to a certain size, right? They might want you to make it 20. So you can say, all right, I can do that. I can make it 20. So three ways of adjusting your column width. One is just click and drag. The other is double click. And the other is right click and go to column width. And then you can affect it that way. And the same applies to row height. You can change your row heights the same way, right? And if you change the font of something, I believe your row height uh, will automatically, but it did not automatically. So here I would be forced to make that bigger this way. And of course now I'd have to make those wider as well. Okay. So you might have noticed here, instead of doing them one at a time, I knew that I was going to have to adjust all of these. So I selected all of them and I double clicked one and it automatically adjusted the width of all of them. Uh, that's something I actually use quite a bit. Uh, you're by default, I believe, uh, you, sh you should be able to type uh, 8.43 characters in a cell. Um, if I go to column width again, yeah, 843 is the standard, and that's what it stands for. It, mean, it means it'll allow eight characters in there to fit. Um, if you end up using more, we saw what happens with the words. With the numbers, if you throw in a number, so I'm going to go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine won't fit. So I'm going to hit enter here, and it, it adjusted the column automatically. Now, sometimes it'll turn your number into scientific not notation if it's too big, right? So here it turns it into scientific notation, and that's just what it'll do by default. And I believe you can change that if you want by making your column wider. And then going to general, I believe, and changing that. There you go. And that got rid of that. And now it's just a normal number. And if I want to get rid of the decimal places, I can get rid of the decimal places. Um, whoa, when you're typing in a cell, so let's say I want to go back to my formula here. I have a formula here. And if I want to edit this formula and I want to say plus plus another cell here. When you're done typing, always hit enter. Um, I, I, or use this right here. But since your hands are on the keyboard, I've always found enter to be so much easier. I realize there are other tricks and other ways that you can do it, but I don't believe in clicking off because when you click off and you're in a formula, it'll sometimes think that you're trying to not use G4, but you're instead trying to use, see what it did there, I9. So clicking off is not a good idea at all. Um, arrow down also thinks that you're trying to change the formula. So it's a bad habit to get into, um, I believe. So clicking off, using your arrows, not a good habit. Enter is just always very, very safe. 
and it's going to work. And if you want to go somewhere else now, you can use your mouse, you can use your arrows to go wherever the heck you want to go. So I, I realized that when you're typing a word, that clicking off will work. And I realized that when you're typing a word or a number, arrow down will work. But the problem is you're going to get into the sloppy habit and then when you're editing or changing formulas, you, that's not going to work for you. And you're going to wonder why your formula got all messed up. So just a warning there.